My name's David, and the chronological Bible reading for August 24th is Jeremiah chapters 51 and 52 with judgment on Babylon. Now, in a physical, historical sense, Babylon was the capital city of the Chaldeans, and the Babylonian Empire was toppled by the Medes and the Persians, whom God eventually used to restore Jerusalem. But in a prophetic sense, Babylon continues to rule the world even 2,600 years later. And that's why a lot of these prophetic writings about Babylon took place in a sense, but have yet to be manifested in another sense. Babylon is mentioned continually throughout scripture and is very notably in the book of Revelation. The spirit of Babylon is still alive and at work in the world today. Remember, that word Babylon means confusion, and it's a world empire that even controls most of the governments of nations all around the world. Chapter 51 begins with a warning against Babylon. God is about to stir up a wind of destruction. Therefore, the nations go mad. If you think about the world banks and the world money supply, higher education that is really indoctrination, the mainstream news media, which is lying to us and seeking to divide us over ancillary issues while not doing their job of reporting the truth and being the watchdog that they are supposed to be for the people. If you think about organized religion that has a form of godliness but denies the power of God, that wants to keep people enslaved, giving them just enough of the truth to placate them, meanwhile urging them to give sacrificially from a financial and time perspective so that they're not able to really overcome and walk out their faith in a world-changing kind of a way. Think about how the food and drug industries are intertwined and the leadership from the FDA is a revolving door of executives from the drug manufacturers that the FDA seeks to regulate. Look at the health of the American people and how 50% of our children are diabetic or pre-diabetic because of the food and the drugs that are being pumped into them from birth. Look at how our physicians are not trained on whole body health any longer. And instead of curing people, they are given medicines that keep them dependent, drain them financially, never heal them, but manage their symptoms. Their lives are prolonged, but the quality of their life is incredibly diminished. From every facet, people are being attacked and robbed, divided and distracted, not knowing which way is up. Babylon is alive and well today. And in the book of Revelation, we will see the final culmination of the battle between good and evil when Jesus, our Messiah, returns. God is warning and has been warning his people for thousands of years to get out of Babylon. So when you read these last two chapters of the book of Jeremiah, it applies to us today. 51.6 says, leave Babylon, save your lives. Don't perish because of her guilt. In verse 24, I will repay Babylon before your very eyes, says Yahweh. Look, I am against you, devastating mountain. You devastate the whole earth. Clearly, Babylon the Great from 2,500 years ago was not dominating the entire earth, but it is today. Again, in verse 45, come out from her, my people. Save your lives, each of you. Babylon must fall because of the slain of Israel. Even as the slain of the whole earth fell because of Babylon, you who have escaped the sword, go and do not stand still. 
We are ashamed because we've heard insults. Humiliation covers our faces because foreigners have entered the holy place of Yahweh's temple. Foreigners were always welcome to come to Israel, but they had to conform. It was never okay for people to come to Israel and expect to maintain their own national heritage to get all of the benefits of being one of God's chosen people while not actually investing themselves and assimilating into that culture. And it's time in 2024 for the people of God to assimilate, to go to God and say, how do you want me to identify? Instead of focusing on our physical heritage, it's time for us to focus on our spiritual heritage, not in a religious sense, but in truth and in spirit. Who is it that God created you to be? As we come out of the Babylonian system of confusion that is alive and well in 2024, we should be fasting and praying and listening for God's voice to instruct us on what it is we should be doing with our finances, with our time, where we should be living what we should be eating, how we should be investing and giving of our time, of our money, and of our resources. Many of us need to turn off our television and stop the indoctrination that comes through the mainstream news media. Many of us need to turn off the radio and stop listening to music, even if it's believed to be Christian music. We need to get alone with the Holy Spirit of God and with the Word of God. We need to open His Word, study it so that we understand it as much as we possibly can. Ask Him for revelation and what He is wanting us to know as we study His Word every day. We should be asking Him daily what He wants us to put into our eyes and into our ears. We should be asking him where he wants us to go and with whom does he want us to speak? How should we be praying and for whom and for what? It is incredibly difficult because we're being indoctrinated and distracted from every angle. We're being poisoned by the air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat, the media we consume. Everywhere we go, the world is trying to draw us away from him. But Jesus came to establish a church that would overcome the gates of hell. He said the gates of hell would not prevail against his church or ecclesia in the Greek. It is time for us to stand up and become the people of God that he's calling us to be so that we can be the ones who prevail against the gates of hell. Chapter 52 is a recap on the history that we've already read in those last years leading up to and entering the Babylonian exile. God bless you guys. Thank you for being on this journey with me through the word of God. We'll see you tomorrow.